Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do this cup noodle uh, model. And um, yeah, I was pretty excited to get this. I thought for a while I was watching people build these. I'm thinking, eh, it's a silly type of a model. But then I kind of got a few good videos in and um, people who really know how to show <laughs> the fun part of building these models and I'm like you know what it's actually entertaining so I thought I'd give it a try and um, yeah I picked one up I picked it up uh, locally here for like 35 bucks in the store so just going through all of the um, <laughs> instructions and they're quite funny um, well, there's a lot of warning of not eating these um, things. It says this item is plastic model kit. It cannot be eaten. Please be careful. Do not accidentally swallow it. Please store it out of reach of small children. It has um, uh, a blue circle with nippers cutting the food. <laughs> um, they have the red crossed out circle. No, nothing going in your mouth. A person with an object going in their mouth. And a hot water and hot cup. <laughs> crossed out with a red circle. It's quite interesting. I'm wondering how many people actually maybe put this in their mouth. Um, yeah, well, I mean, maybe small children, I can imagine. But, yeah, it's quite the warning on, I think, every page. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm just nipping these apart. And as you can see, I'm using my glass sander here. Um, and, uh, just getting the little nibs. I just hate having little nibs. And I find that the sanding is um, very relaxing, so I don't mind doing it. And what I do is I rub my nail, thumbnail, my pointer fingernail across it. And if it's smooth, then I'm good and happy. Um, you also see me use a sanding block like this here. And that's just to smooth it out, just get that roughness from the sandpaper. I have so many grades of sandpaper too, but I only used one. I don't know what grade it was, but I only used one. Um, but if you're doing projects like this, it's nice to get a whole load of grades and then just snip them up into strips or whatever size that you like to use all the time. You can wrap them around popsicle sticks. Sometimes I put them around like a little skewer if I've got a little spot. And yeah, so <laughs> that is that. So I'm just working on that and getting all my little nibs. So I'm working on the outer rim edge where the lip of the soup cup is right now. And, um, yeah, you got to line it up and there's these little, uh, parts with the uh, little slots and little holes and little things like that where you got to line it up. I had, a, uh, it was not too hard. I think at one point I had to kind of realign it, but it wasn't too hard. It was a fun little project. I think this took me a couple of hours. And, um, I wrote it down on my... Instagram how long it took. I can't remember because I'm now doing a voiceover after the fact, but yeah, it was a fun little thing. It's like doing a puzzle, um, but I kind of get to keep my puzzle at the end. I mean, I could take it all apart, but there's no point. I just like the little model, so I put it in my little glass um, shelf behind glass because I can imagine um, <laughs> dusting these pieces. Anyways, I thought I'd read out a few little facts while we're kind of watching off of this um, pamphlet that I showed you guys here with the instructions. They have quite a few different little things on here. So it says, what's cup, what's cups, uh, sorry, what's cup noodle? Cup noodle was created as the first cup ramen in the world in, on September 18th, 1971. So that's pretty cool. Little history here. It can be enjoyed by pouring hot water and waiting for three minutes it's a long-selling product that celebrates its 50th anniversary in 2021. So that's pretty cool. So I don't know exactly when this model came out. Um, I'm sure it's been out for a while. But yeah, the 50th anniversary for the invention of this brand, I suppose. Or the invention of the whole invention. Because it's like 1971. So that's pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah. That's just just creeped me out. 1971 is not too far off from my birthday, so they're celebrating their 50. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll just drop that one. Anyway, so <laughs> the things that they have in here, and it's like the original, the original cup noodle. They have um, the leeks, 
um, the egg, shrimp, and mystery meat, which is what they wrote down here, mystery meat, which is kind of interesting. I wonder what it is. It is um, brown in color, um, even looking at the re real cup noodles, but I'm wondering if that is actual um, meat <laughs> or, you know, mushed up mystery meat and then shaped into little cubes. I don't know. It's weird. At the bottom of the... Um, thing there too. They also have a color guide which is really cool. So um, in case you want to, like I did touch up with actual paints. I used acrylics. No, actually I did did not. Did I? No. I did use acrylic paint, regular um, craft acrylic paint for the food and then I sealed it. But I used Gundam color um, red for the cup noodle and which matched really well for the cup noodle part and you'll see that later on. Um, I don't know. I think these things do have, do they have separate numbers? I'm just looking at my Gundam paint. This is silver that doesn't have a number. Let's see this one here. Um, this one says 10. So they might have, they have little numbers on them. So this red one here has a 20. I don't know if that means anything to you guys. I'm pretty new. I, Gundam and paint and all that stuff for that kind of thing, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. So I did. Um, I'm still doing my little edges here. Sorry, now I'm going to jump back into what I'm looking at. I'm trying to keep you entertained a bit. <laughs> it's going to be a long video, considering I try to keep my videos short, but this is a whole build here. I. Um, didn't stop it and build anything. I just kept going and I just speed it up like a lot <laughs> because I mean it, it was uh, like a little over two hour build so speeding it up is the only way I can get it on here without boring you guys to death. Still working on the cup. So yeah I thought this was quite um, interesting little. I actually want to keep the instructions because they were quite interesting. Just so many little things in here that they have. Um, they even have the, the Nissan Food Products Co. Limited even on the um, <laughs> instructions which is quite not just never, like on the cup part where they're showing but on the instructions. That's pretty interesting. I don't know how long Bandy's been making um, these but I know they've been working together with the cup noodle for quite some time. So, also too here, we're talking about noodles now. I'm all, see I was just talking about the cup sign now, making the cup sign there. But just talking about the noodles, they have the noodles suspended in here. Hopefully you guys can catch what I'm saying here. Um, the noodle cluster can be seen when the front panel is open. And removed so you can see it I can't get a little gap underneath like the picture shows that there's a little bit of a gap and the noodles are suspended I didn't quite get that look it it kind of just goes just slightly below the little window but yeah that's there so the middle suspension structure they're talking about this suspending and storing noodles Okay, it compact designed to prevent the ingredients from the breaking when the cup is shaken. So I guess this is why they designed it. So the, the cup, the cylinderishness of the cup and the noodles are a little bit wider so it doesn't hit right at the bottom, which, okay, that's good. B, let also say the noodle cluster is close contact with the cup container and it prevents the noodles from breaking while increasingly dura <laughs> durability of the cup preventing problems during transportation. So we've all had those cups kind of, I can't imagine it in a backpack or anything, because I mean it is styrofoam, but I mean from the pantry to the cover, it's all good. It's all good. Um, the dest destiny of the supposed, oh suspended noodles clusters is lower at the bottom and it grows higher and gets, um, as it gets closer to the top. This is the secret that allows the noodles to cook quickly, and the ingredients on the top of the noodles the clusters do not fall down into the container, and leads to a beautiful, appetizing final result. Which, I have to say, my leeks fell down. My little leeks on my model. <laughs> but, who knows, right? Um, 
And then number or letter D, it says a lower space. The boiling water that seeps down into the space surrounds the noodles from the bottom and loosens the entire noodle cluster. What magic do we have here? What sorcery? That's the explanation of why cup noodle makes the perfect noodle. Or cup noodle. So that was the um, third page of information here that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, this is just like kind of like explaining the middle suspension. Suspension structure. <laughs> okay, where am I at here? Now I'm going to look onto my video. I'm entertaining myself quite a bit here. So I'm just working on my little cup noodle sign, which I thought that was really fun to do. I don't know. That was probably my favorite part. Um, just playing with that. It was just so... I don't know. I can't think of a word. Just to do, do the nubs on there and just to kind of clean them up and and that kind of thing on those little pieces really was satisfying that's the word I guess satisfying <laughs> so I like those I like kind of fiddly pieces maybe sometimes let's see here what else we have on the fourth page do we have anything to share it says here oh we we're talking about the noodle cup noodle trivia um, when seen from above, the uh, en the entrance of Kansai Kansai Factory. I am not sure if it's the correct say uh, way I'm saying it because usually that would not be correct. It's K A N S A I Factory looks like a lid of cup noodle when you seen it from above, which is pretty interesting. The door, the front entrance, I suppose, or main entrance. That's pretty cool. Um, in this kit, they they have the lid stopper sticker that can be used to recreate the cooking noodle process, um, which I did add to mine. Um, I left my noodles open. I like to use it, so I kind of use that sticker that sticks down the edge of it to kind of hold my noodles open. After curling for a little while, my lid's kind of now staying open. But yeah, I, I put mine on. Um, so that was pretty interesting. Not too much trivia on this page. That was the um, fourth page in. Yes, fourth page in on one side. We're flipping over. Do they have anything on the other side? Now the other side is all um, the black and white grayscale. And I don't know if they have anything. They have notes on assembly. And they actually have quite a bit of English on here, which is really nice because on a lot of the models I do, especially Gundam models, they are not. There's nothing in English. Very frustrating at times. Okay, let's see. Oh, they do have reverse thinking. Okay, let's read this. This is on the very last one. So the, on the, I flip on the other side, and there's nothing but instruction, which is great. But on the last page, they do have a little tidbit. Let's see what it says here. Um, it says, reverse thinking, suspended the noodle cluster. So fixing the noodle cluster in the center of the cup with an automated production line was a difficult task. Keep the flat section of the noodles horizontal and especially difficult and the, the form of the noodles would crumble when they were when there were gaps by grasped by the machines so um, mono fuku ando struggles to find solutions day and night um, I probably butchered his name I'm sorry when he woke up in the um, in bed one night he felt that the ceiling was slowly rotating probably due to hallucination. <laughs> okay. And almost seems that the sky and the earth were reversed. Um, this um, empathy, um, I know the word, can't say it, um, led to a method of um, placing the noodle clusters upside down on the bottom, covering it with the cup from above, which was um, the approach that created the reverse thinking. 
The next morning, the method was tried in the, in the lab, and the noodle clusters were successfully secure inside the cup. Cup noodles were now able to mass produce, and this marked the beginning of the new era in the instant noodle history. Yay! Yay for reverse thinking. So, I guess they just sealed it all upside down with the lid and everything. There we go. Where are we now? I'm totally, totally lost in, in, ah, yeah. So now I'm just adding the little pieces of plastic on the cup. So it's quite interesting adding all these things to the cup, um, these little labels and stuff like that. So I just added this jazz label, which was the gold and the red. Was it gold? It was gold, and then you have the white. So, and then that little half moon one, half circle one, which I don't even know which one that one is, what it had on there. But yeah, these the interesting little labels, and then the um, not spilled, uh, hot, and uh, I don't know what the other one was. Maybe it wasn't recyclable. I don't know. Let's look at it. Let's move it around here. I just have my, my, um, I didn't want to take the cup back out because I'm going to be turning around looking at it and then I'm going to be making a lot of noises here, shaking it up. But yeah, those were the warning signs on that little red square part there. This is where I was having a bit of trouble lining up at first. Um, I don't know if you can see it, this video is not the, the best. I bought a new camera, guys, so that's going to be coming up soon. I have to kind of get that situated onto my computer but yeah at first I had a little bit of a problem I had to take it apart see here this was not quite lining up with that um, back piece that's right there on the cup the whatever that says oh there's my alarm yay okay and there's my let the dogs out alarm it's early in the morning <laughs> anyway so yeah I had to kind of realign everything here to get it to go around that little back sign on the cup and noodle. So let's see what that it won't tell me what it says but it is the larger yeah it doesn't say anything of what it says on there but it's that larger strip in the back and there we have it. I'm just going on and on about this this cup. <laughs> I was um, pretty happy with the build. I have to say there was a bit of gaps and it was just squeezing it together and that kind of thing. Um, in the part where they had the window, so I wasn't too thrilled about that. But I mean, I'm being picky here. So um, another thing I was not too pleased about maybe might have been like the sticker situation but we can get to that but yeah now I'm just like oh let's build the noodles yay which was super easy um, and quite cool how they kind of interlock and overlap which was really nice so it was more like building I don't know almost like Lego at this point with this noodle so it was pretty easy and fun. So when I here you can see that when I tend to take pieces apart, I will put them in the place where they have them in my instruction manual. I know there's a lot of people just to snap everything apart and then they build it after. I have no idea how they do that. Maybe one day I will be that good. I'm just doing a few little nubs. There's nothing much showing on these, um, but I just want to make sure nothing's sticking out or rough looking or because that would look odd. Noodles are not, like, rough looking. Like, they don't have, like, burrs of plastic or anything like that. So I make sure that's not there. See, yeah, this part is like building Lego, kind of, like, just putting it together. Easy peasy. But it looks pretty cool. So this is the part that's, like, more layered, which was really super cool. It makes it look well, a little more realistic. If you squint. <laughs> No, it's not bad, but you can see like the where they have little spaces there, and then they have the noodles showing through. 
I mean, you could see all that, but that's pretty cool. And I ended up adding, adding some paint to it to make it look more realistic. So that looks good, too. So, anyways, yeah, I tend to, um, when I snap the parts, or nip the parts apart, <laughs> when I nip them apart, I just do, I do place them in where the instructions will have them by the letter or number. And then I put them together, because otherwise I'm going to lose track. Especially smaller um, modeling pieces, but I just find, I take my time. I do go through it. It seems like I'm going through it really fast, even this is a couple hours, but I do take my time. And sometimes I will stop and I'll just leave my pieces. Like if I have a little space where no one or no animal can get in here, no, you know, and I can just leave it on the table. And um, I had a problem with my cat taking off with pieces of things. <laughs> so yeah, we have to go into a nice closed room. But um, yeah, it's nice to be able to just leave it exactly the way the instructions are so then you're not losing track of what you're doing. And I do not like taking everything off at once. It's crazy. That's crazy talk. People just have that brain where they can just put it all together. That's good. <laughs> it's not me. So here I'm putting on stickers and you can see I'm kind of like ugh, taking it off a little bit. You have this embossed um, on the cup. It's like embossed. It's imprinted all these things that are on the sticker so it was kind of a little frustrating I'm not sure why they have that and I haven't seen a real cup of noodle for like super long time to see if it's embossed on there but I've heard some people say that it's that way so then they could just do a wash over it or you know paint it themselves carefully and I couldn't even imagine doing that but suppose maybe a wash um, would be easy to clean up after. But what I did to get um, the embossed look is I just used my heat gun for my heat tool for heating up my art and crafts and paints and blah 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 and just waved it in front. I don't know if you see it on here. You waved it, I waved it in front, used a q-tip to kind of push in what I heated up on the sticker a bit into the embossed places. It worked really well for the larger embossed places. Um, like here I'm doing the little cup thing and the little garbage thing here. Those little signs on the side. And yes, it worked really well on that. Um, on the smaller stuff, I was just... Um, yeah, at first I used the... Uh, <laughs> this bone folder. It works for some pieces, but I really needed to get the Q-tip out to use a nice soft touch and not scratch up the uh, sticker. Anyhow, um, so yeah, I just put some heat over it and then just slowly rubbed and just did it over and over, rubbed um, my Q-tip all over and got a lot of it embossed. The, um, oh, what the heck is that thing called? The price thing in Jiggy. The, the barcode was embossed really nicely by doing that and a lot of that writing was embossed nicely, but especially some of the bigger pieces that had like the cups don't spill whatever they had on this side. It worked really well on the bigger pieces. Um, but yeah, you can get the embossed guest, uh, embossed gisk, isk look. Um, you can't get the, 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 the things right in there with the heat, but it, I, I think I got a lot of it. A lot better than just sticking it on. So I was just very careful not to melt. I didn't like over heat it. I had it on the first level and I just kind of like rolled my heater, my heat tool over it and just went for a few seconds and then just in, in, um, burnished it with my <laughs> um, Q-tip. So that worked. So, yeah. Um, the smaller stickers, oh my goodness, they were horrible. I'm using my tweezers a lot of the time here too to pick them up. You can't really peel them away. You have to kind of bend the edges. And uh, I think I lost a couple. And I was like going to stick them on. I'm like, where did it go? And it just like flew. Trying to get it off of my tweezers. And I'm just like, this is this is not cool. So I um, ended up painting a lot of the little, 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 little sticker pieces that were ridiculous ridiculous a little and like I said before I used the um, that was for the red 
and I did use the Gundam paint for that. Here is, here is me embossing. Here is me doing that um, Q-tip thingy. I really did a good job on this one here because they had the bigger pieces. As you can see, the white is all like inlaid, like in embossed. And of course, this barcode is great. And the other pieces were okay, but um, you can see a little bit in Boston, but of course it's not going to be every letter or every score or every tick or whatever of the writing that they have there on there is not going to be embossed because it's just impossible to stick it in there, especially you're going to wreck your sticker. But you get the, a lot of them kind of going in, so it was really good. I just was really careful and I just did heat it up a few times. As you can see, there's my little heat tool. Nothing fancy, not the real heavy duty one, just a little art craft one. Yeah, so I took my time, got the air bubbles out, and um, you can see I was trying to get a little closer to show you that there's embossed pieces. You might be have been able to catch that. Of course, I'm like speeding through it, so it makes it so impossible to see the stuff that I've tried to show you. <laughs> but you can see that it is embossed in there, and I suppose someone could do a gold wash over it. I didn't even think about that, to be honest. So. Yeah, I didn't even think about doing that, but uh, that is a possibility. And this one here, this jazz, oh, did that ever work well. It really got in there, really heating it up and just pushing with my Q-tip. Oh yeah, that one worked really great. Like I said, the larger ones, the larger lettering was really nice. I was just impressed. I pressed myself. <laughs> so that is how it looked. I just was going over. I even embossed it a bit and then I was kind of like or bent burnishing and even peeling it up a little bit because there was a little bubble and it was bugging me this one this one was okay wasn't that okay I can't remember I think I might have lost it anyways these stickers oh a silly little right between the the little doodle thing the little lettering character or whatever it is called I'm not sure it's just like, why? Why? But the heat tool did help get some of the stickers to stay on, which I'm not sure. Uh, there was one that I actually used, uh, some kind of, what did I use to try to get it on? It was not sticking very well. I used like Mr. Mark's softer, softener um, from the hobby for like um, decals or whatever they're called, decals. It just to soften up. I don't know if it did soften up the plastic, but I was just like desperate to get it to stick. One piece, one little, little piece. And I tried it, and I think it helped. I don't know. I didn't have like... It, the softener is supposed to soften the plastic around the, the model. And I suppose like, you know, you can just do a clear coat or whatever. I didn't do a clear coat on, on the whole cup, but you could do a clear coat to hold it on or whatever. So I don't know if it worked, but it seemed to work at the time. I used it and you might see it here I don't know how fast it went <laughs> but yeah these these stickers were not sticking very well and I was having such look at how small they are they're so small and I'm like at one point I'm like where's my sticker and I looked everywhere everywhere it just flew flew and um, that was just a little struggle but you see, I'm getting my paint out and do the little things here. Yeah, I'm like, where is... I'm looking for it now, see? I'm like, where does it go? Where did it go? I just had it. I just picked it up. Crazy. Anyway. <sighs> yeah. Thank goodness for Q-tips and paint brushes and paint. So I ended up... Um, here's trying this one. That didn't even work. I think I ended up losing it again. Another one. So yeah, here I grabbed this paint. That's the one I was talking about. I was using a bit. I did have to go over on the really small lettering in that little space down the bottom where I first lost the sticker. I had to go over it with like thinner or whatever it was after I painted it because it was just such a small space just to clear up the white around. So that's what I did. I'm like even getting my magnifying glass here. It's like it's so small. And I, I don't even know if, what size brush I had. I had a super small one. It was just such a small little space. And it had two little, um, kind of like two little dots or, um, I can't even think of the word, 
um, colons maybe not colons not colons it's two little dots over a character and I'm just trying to get around there without messing up the character so yeah I had to grab the q-tip and do this here and um, get around there and really kind of scrub that paint I wasn't sure how sticky this paint is it's pretty good paint wasn't it, it wasn't too hard to get off but I was like oh I better get off I'm starting to panic here <laughs> so I was rubbing it for a good few minutes because I had a little little piece that was just not coming off and I was just like used to there's a cute uh, toothpick just to scrape it without scratching my cup just to get a little bit of it off so yeah yay for toothpicks it worked and uh, yeah I'm sitting here thinking why am I doing this treading a few more spots but then I'm like oh actually this was the bottom that was the bottom that is the due date of when your noodles are gonna you know be old <laughs> The uh, expiration expiration date, and I think this is pretty much done with the stickers. Thank goodness. The stickers were uh, they were okay at the beginning <laughs> when I figured out I could emboss them into the cup, but I wasn't even gonna go and touch the shrimp stickers. There's no way. I'm looking at them. I'm like, there's no way looking at the shape of the shrimp, looking at those stickers. No. So I decided to um, go the acrylic paint way. Oh yeah, that's it. Playing with that. So the paints that I did use after we you see here in a second. I think I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing. It's so small. Oh, this is where I was using that Mr. That little sticker thing there. Oh, I didn't want to stick. They had just a little piece right underneath this little circle area. What the heck was that on there? I don't know. It was crazy. And so I tried that, and it did work. Because I tried heating it up, and it wasn't quite working. So here I'm just doing the um, egg. Cutting all that egg and, and all that stuff. So I used um, a few, few um, colors here. I believe I used the school bus yellow... Um, this is like uh, Americana paints. I used, um, and that was a little bit like on my egg and on my shrimp. And I used some brown sugar and I used a darker um, paint as well, which I believe was like a cocoa. And um, buttercream, which really I liked buttercream. So I just um, hit those used the paper towel and get most of that paint off and hit my shrimp and I actually did everything I did the mystery meat the shrimp and the egg and um, here's my I did cut the instruction says cut down the middle and then you cut to the size that you want on your leeks here I thought there were onions but you know they're leeks um, and I was going a little small at first I'm like whoa a little small and we cut it forever so I did them a little bit bigger. They are leaks after all. A little bit bigger. But yeah, I was kind of just doing a few here on the camera. That's probably the only thing that I just did off camera after. I was like, here's a few leaks. There you go. Done. A little too small though. So I did keep these, threw them in there, but um, I did uh, just a little bit larger after. And you'll see that. So here I'm grabbing Google. Yay, Google. Let's see what a real cup of soup looks like. And I'm trying to figure out the colors here. And you can see that my shrimp's quite orange. And, and um, yeah, so I do that. I think I'm working on the shrimp first. I'm doing the brown sugar first. Or the, what was it again? Yes, brown, brown sugar on there first. And I think I add a little bit of that dark brown just to get a little bit of color. And then I barely touch it. And then I just highlight it with the buttercream. What is that color? It is called buttermilk. And here, oh, I have a little real red in there too, just to give, they have that bit of a red on that shrimp after they're cooked, I think. And um, I don't eat shrimp. Um, just texture thing, just too gummy, I don't know. And um, yeah. So I'm thinking, I tried to sh flip some over here, and I did so fast because 
Yeah, I really speed up the video, but I was trying to show you that how half of them looked when I did the other side. And I flipped over to the unpainted side. I don't know if you caught that, but that is what I did. And I'm just continuing with the painting. So, yeah. Anyways, so I, I could see how they might look like they're edible, and um, they have all these warnings on the instructions. <laughs> Back to my instructions. I think they're adorable. They are adorable. Yep. There is a lot of warnings on the box as well. Oh, here's my shrimp. They look like shrimp. They're kind of cute. And there's quite a few different warnings here, so yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but like I said, little kids, little kids could like grab the model and be in danger of ingesting plastic. Yeah. Very, very cute project. I really enjoyed this one. So I don't have any more things to add that are from the box or the thing. Let's grab the box. I love this box too. Here is the mystery meat. Oh yay! It's so brown. I'm I'm not sure what the mystery meat is. Let's see here. It on the box it says Cup of Noodle Best Hit Chronicle. Cup noodle. Um right on the box too, it says plastic model kit. Do not eat. Hmm. Right in the front on the box. The box looks pretty cool. Like you've seen the box, it looks pretty cool. It's like the whole earth and the whole sunrise. And yeah, it's pretty epic. Epic cup of noodle for 50th anniversary. I guess that's what it is, the 50th anniversary. The, um, yeah, there's nothing interesting here. The label surface and, yeah, you know, they're just talking about what things are here, so. Um, like the label that goes on the top the lid here um the silver back surface of the lid as we go along here and i'm painting i realize we're getting to the end it's almost done i actually talked for like over half an hour without really freaking out that i didn't have enough to say this is pretty cool i actually enjoyed this craft um say it's it's artists can do whatever right they can do models they can do diamond painting you do whatever number painting you don't have to just stick to creating from scratch so i really found this relaxing um i I'd, I'd recommend giving a model a try try something maybe um a character you really enjoy um something easy maybe to start off with and give it a try um friends i have pictures at the end i really thank you guys for watching um, this video and taking the time. I know this is a generally a crafting channel. I will be probably posting this on another channel as well. So if you're not, you're wondering, what are you talking about crafting channel? But, um, yeah, give it a try guys. I think, um, doing something different, totally different than your, your norm is a nice breath of fresh air. And, um, I'm planning to do at least one model a month. Um, I'm going to try to do that because I'm going to try I have uh, enough for that and um, they're going to get different I want to try different things so this was my first one recorded so I hope you guys enjoyed this tell me what you think please let me know if you thought this was an interesting video and if there's anything I could do change it for you um, and any questions you have I hope these pictures do some justice here um, on the paint job I did seal it with Mr. Clear Sealer on matte the food so it looks um, realistic and I hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks again for watching guys talk to you all soon very soon bye for now everyone